Hi, everyone. I hope you guys can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes? OK, good. So sorry for this uh, small delay in beginning our, our panel. So you can hear me? OK. OK, so yeah, maybe change the channel. OK, good. So I'm Carlos Afonso from Center for Technology and Society at Getulio Vargas Foundation in Rio de Janeiro. And uh, the CTS, the Center for Technolo Technology and Society, is one of the co-sponsors, uh, co-organizers, I would say, of this uh, event, together with APC, Association for Progressive Communications, and the NCUC, the Non-Commercial Users Constituency at ICANN. So the idea of this panel is to provide you, by the end of the day, with a very lively, informal conversation on human rights at ICANN. I know that uh, probably you guys are feeling tired after our long day, so we will run this panel in a more informal way. We have some very distinguished panelists here, and we want them to provide you with some feedback on those issues. And I would say we are going to run the panel in the following fashion. We are first have a discussion on what are the human rights that end up being having some connections to the ICANN public policy role? So the first part of our conversation will be to identify the human rights and the issues under current ICANN policy activities that could serve as a good introduction for those of you who are starting now to pay some attention, to do some research, and to uh, develop some activities on this area. And after doing this mapping, we will try to come out, come out with some results on how can we then bring those human rights concerns inside the activities of ICANN on a more practical level. So we are starting with the, a, map, uh, a map activity, and then we go to, to to tackle some more strategic, more practical level uh, approaches. So I'll have the I'll handle the mic and uh, have the floor to to, to Joy Lidicott, who's going to be our moderator for for the session to the beginning of our presentations. Okay, so Joy, please. Thank you, Carlos, and thank you very much um, to you and your colleagues at the Centre for Technology and Society for supporting this um, important initiative. You know, I'd have to say that one thing that's marked out this IGF for me is I don't think I've seen a single PowerPoint presentation in any of the workshops I've been in yet. <laughs> Um, but despite this fact, you know, um, it still feels as if um, we must, uh, we must, uh, is this going? Is this microphone working? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, excuse me, but it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, so, I mean, it still feels nonetheless that we must have some preparatory remarks. So um, I wanted perhaps just to set the scene a little bit before handing over to my, to my distinguished panellist uh, to talk more on substance and just talk about the, um, the non-commercial user constituency within ICANN. I mean, ICANN has a, a wide variety of stakeholder groups, uh, commercial and non-commercial, and um, the non-commercial users constituency is one of sort of the, the older um, constituency groups within ICANN. Um, and it's been focused uh, very much around various human rights issues uh, uh, throughout its history. Um, so I suppose one question one might ask is, you know, why, you know, what's the focus on ICANN and human rights now? So I'm just being a little distracted by the, the, the um, officials here, so I'll hopefully they'll sort out that technical problem shortly. Um, the... The first thing I'm supposed to say is what's ICANN's remit on human rights? I mean, why is human rights relevant to a body that's primarily tasked with coordinating uh, an, a narrow range of um, critical uh, internet resources uh, on 
technical matters. And so the first thing to say, I think, in that regard is that ICANN is not a human rights standards-making body. It doesn't make human rights um, standards or, or laws. Um, it, it has, uh, however, um, a narrow range of responsibility for public policy in relation to domain names, domain name addressing, and related matters. Uh, and so therefore, because of this public interest focus, this public policy focus, um, human rights are, are relevant to its mandate. And um, uh, as a result of this, we thought we might be useful to talk about just some of the current issues within ICANN. Not, the non-commercial users constituency has been focused on, on three broad issues in the last year, the first being um, who is policy, and I'm going to ask Wendy Salsa to talk briefly about the who is policy uh, and privacy related issues. Uh, we focused on new generic top level domain names. Um, that's the rollout by ICANN of an ap application process for a variety of new generic top level domains. We focused also on uh, trademark dispute resolution processes, uh, public policy issues related to um, the balancing of rights and intellectual property and rights to, to free expression. Uh, and within this context, um, uh, I, I'm going to quickly turn actually to, to um, Wendy um, and just ask you perhaps to just talk about some of the examples that um, we've had in relation to who is in privacy just for those who perhaps are new to, to ICANN um, as a public policy space and talk about some of the human rights issues uh, in, that, in that topic. Wendy. Okay, I'm, I'm going to start back a little bit um, with the uh, UN Declaration of Human Rights and uh, Article 19, um, the right to freedom of ex opinion and expression, uh, because the reason that I'm particularly concerned about uh, ICANN's domain name policy uh, is because of its impact on individuals and uh, non-commercial associations' ability to express themselves and to use the internet for free expression and association. Uh, so ICANN, um, manages policy for uh, generic top-level domains. Domain names are uh, tools of online expression in that they serve as pointers to uh, online speech. If you want to, to speak and have a, a reference location for that speech, registering a domain name uh, and having that in your own control uh, is a way to, to assure the persistence of, of what you're trying to say. Uh, and so um, it's not so much that people are speaking through the DNS itself. Um, I don't think uh, that's so significant as the ability to have a pointer in the DNS that leads to the speech that you're making elsewhere on the web or through other uh, internet technologies, email communications and, uh, and other means. And so when you register a domain name and are required to put information into uh, the who is, uh, that's, uh, that impacts your, your freedom of expression. Uh, we've, we've argued in, in many of the um, long drawn out who is processes uh, that it should be possible to, to register a domain name uh, without having your uh, private information uh, name and address and phone number uh, publicly available uh, in the WHOIS uh, database. Uh, more recently, uh, privacy and proxy services have made uh, some of those uh, things um, rather better protected, uh, but you're still left to uh, rely on the, the privacy or proxy service provider to protect that information. Um, and if you're trying to register a name to point to uh, political association speech um, or minority speech, dissident speech, things that might get you arrested in your home country um, and don't want those things to be uh, in a database, even shielded by the good graces of a company trying to, uh, to keep them private for you, um, that, that implicates your uh, right to free expression. So uh, what should ICANN be doing, um, they say, should be considering the rights impact of its policies. Uh, it's not out there um, on the front lines at, uh, championing these policies so much as recognizing that these, uh, that 
these human rights are uh, rights that can be implicated by ICANN policies um, and watching to make sure that when it has a choice between ways of implementing uh, a policy that's been set or ways of setting a policy among alternatives uh, that we choose the uh, the means that is uh, protective of, of human rights. Thanks. Thanks, Wendy. That's a, a, an excellent introduction. And I just wanted to um, perhaps ask uh, Ku Wei, who's uh, on the ICANN board, um, uh, not so much perhaps to comment on the substantive, uh, substantive uh, points that Wendy's raised, but more, I suppose, to give a sort of a broad perspective as to ICANN's um, public policy role and the, and the ways in which um, human rights uh, issues uh, may arise. Please. Uh, or, or, yeah, Kuwait? Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, I have to say, you know, uh, what I'm saying here is uh, based on my personal capacity. I can uh, represent the whole board or the ICANN institution as a whole, you know, because uh, this, uh, this is a big issue and uh, need to all go through all the process. Uh, particularly follow the ICANN, you know, the ATR mechanism, and, you know, you need to listen to all the, the multi-stakeholders to make a final policies. But uh, back to uh, the, the, the issue you are asking, I think there is a couple of things need to be clarified. Uh, for example, first of all, when, when you are talking about the DNS, I always like to uh, mention to everyone, DNS is everywhere. DNS is not only the root server, it's really everywhere. And most of the DNS actually is not under the ICANN control. First of all, you should know, for example, the CCNS or DNS is a running by the CCTLD operator. And CCTLD operator in general, they follow their own, you know, the sovereignty countries, uh, 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 the law enforcement, they, they need to follow it. And, and of course, uh, another one is uh, the DNS in the network operator. Definitely, I can cannot do anything about that. What I can really can do is, uh, I think it's a couple of the things uh, from from the board point of view is um, the first of all is uh, how we can uh, really uh, do the implementation into the whole policy process. I think that is the people really interesting. And and uh, as you know. The ICANN, we are running the multi-stakeholder, and right now you can hear a lot of people say we are multi-stakeholder mechanisms. And I'd like to, you know, mention to the uh, the new CEO, the father, he mentioned about in the opening, he said, the, uh, the, the ICANN basically is a multi-stakeholder equal mechanism, more than just multi-stakeholder mechanisms. What's that mean equal? That means every stakeholder have a equal right to say, equal right to voice, and equal right to participate in the, the whole policy process. I think that is, a <clears throat> that is the first thing to do. So basically right now, um, under the, you know, the current uh, the ICANN process, we have all kinds of stakeholders, you know, for every ICANN policy go on, we always are buttoned up. We are not going to the, you know, top down. You know, it's really listen to all the multi stakeholder to, you know, uh, their opinions. I'm not saying we are a perfect system. I think we are in we are in the you know, just uh, the ICANN as you know is only about from nineteen ninety eight till now it's roughly about fourteen, fifteen years old child. You know, uh, but we are really try to continue to improve this mechanism to, to you know listen to every voices so from my point of view is uh, uh, how to make the, uh, the the human right into the ICANN system I think my interpretation I think the human right is based on three things first of all is a respect second is a listen the number three is how to implement it and I think most of the people say we respect we listen, but very f well. Some of the people they don't implement it, and I think uh, that I can basically from the very beginning the multi-stakeholder mechanism is how we try to have uh, one mechanism really to implement the policy development. You know, based on 
the respect and listening. I think that is a, that's the first point I like to point out. And also, I think a lot of people also like to raise about you know the human rights issue, particularly in the ICANN process, such as uh, you know, I, I think Wendy and many of the panel panelists here they knew they're talking about the Hui database. And and I like to point again, the Hui database is not that simple. I mean, not simple mean it's a not one space. The Hui database is everywhere. Really everywhere, you know. Uh, you can find a Hui database in the GTOD. You can find a Hui database in the CCNSO, CCTOD. You also can find a Hui database in the you know the 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 the, the, the uh, IR you know the the IP address communities. And more than that, you go to your network operator. You go to you know down to another label. The Hui database is over there. So what is ICANN can do is uh, we try to continue to improve the mechanism to implement what we, you know, the human right concern. And bring this is a successful mechanism to implement it. And hopefully we can attract or also, you know, to, to, to demonstrate to the other people, say, this is the way to implement the human right in real implication in your mechanisms. So, you know, I, I think, again, maybe it's not perfect, but I think we, we, we try our best and uh, try to uh, do that way. And uh, we continue to listen to all the stakeholders to tell us. And that is, uh, you know, in, in my personal uh, capacity to say that. Thank you. Thank you, um, Kyo Wei. I think it would be fair to say that one particular policy area where you're very much um, feeling that um, complexity at the moment is in your GTLD space. Um, and uh, I thought I'd just ask Hong Shui to um, perhaps make some comments about what are some of the substantive human rights issues you might be um, seeing there. Hong? Uh, thank you, Judy. Uh, I'm very sorry, I was late. Uh, I was at the main session. Uh, there's a feeder workshop to present. Oh, this should better organize because we all have many other concurrent sessions to go. <laughs> uh, well, I guess that she will be talked about by the other uh, colleagues, so I just jump in. So I grabbed this topic. I want to talk about new GTLD. Uh, what is uh, human rights issues in the new GTLD process? For me, I, I see uh, some very, very interesting issue uh, right here, uh, such as the, uh, free speech or free expression. Um, uh, well, first of all, whether a domain name string looks pretty uh, short, brief, is an expression uh, or not. Oh, yes, could be. And whether the string is subject to the uh, uh, reveal of this morality and the public order, this is really a, a free speech issue. Um, if domain name string um, will have to subject to this uh, to be defined public order or morality uh, principles, I, I guess there will be some serious restriction on the expression through this little string and think about there will be IDN uh, TLDs and these IDN are also expressions in their native scripts. But this is not my biggest concern. A string is brief. You, you, if one is not appropriate, probably you could change to another one. My biggest concern is whether ICANN, which is a technical coordination organization, is going down further, uh, not only um, looking at a string of the domain name, but also look at the contents of the websites. I think this is the biggest concern I, I see uh, from the guidebook of uh, new GTLD applicants. I can see uh, some of the part could very interestingly uh, affect the operation of the GTLD uh, in, in, at a website level. Uh, that would be very, very interesting. ICANN does not uh, uh, control or censor the, the contents at all. Uh, but this issue has come up, unfortunately, in the past. In the case of dot triple X, the triple X itself is not obscene or <laughs> pornographic. But what is used has raised uh, many concerns. 
and there was some very interesting discussion. Uh, we see this interesting uh, dynamics, uh, communication between ICANN board and GAP. Uh, eventually, it was approved. In the new, new GTLD uh, process, we can see there's quite some um, section about the promise from the applicants about the future operation of the TLD. This is very, very interesting. How would ICANN to use this compliant department to check how the domain name, how, how this TLD is going to operate in, in the future. For example, it's promise. It, it, it is IDN string. It will operate in its own language community. Well, I can check the website registered in the TLD to make sure this is really served for that community. This is really community-based. Uh, what is the future compliance? I guess this is a very big topic. I'm running out of time. No, no, oh, no I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, so I, I guess um, in the future there will be uh, uh, really many devils in the details. Um, uh, we're now moving to the stage of uh, stream reviews. And next step is objection, dispute resolution, and then is derogation. Uh, we we do have these issue. Uh, we not we not come up, but but. W we're not sure. Probably it will happen. Um, and, and finally, what I want to say is that um, um, ICANN is a technical uh, organization, or, uh, even though it's very, very important, absolutely. They, they should not go to look at the, the contents of the websites. If they do, I do believe this is very much uh, uh, dangerous uh, tendency. Uh, right, OK. But yeah, and just to clarify, I don't believe that Hong was suggesting that ICANN would. I th <laughs> no, I think she's raising a concern that, that ICANN should not. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, and perhaps that's an appropriate point at which to ask Avery, um, you know, who we now very affectionately refer to as Dot Avery. Um, <laughs> Steve Crocker, I believe, coined that phrase. Um, perhaps to talk about uh, uh, this very this very issue um, in relation to the human rights implications around top level domains. Avery? Thank you. I'm not actually not sure what I'm going to say about that. <laughs> um, because it's true that ICANN does not have any position to regulate what is expressed. However, in making the claims that various community applicants make to sort of say, we will do this, they will be contractually bound to living up to those commitments. So at that point, I'd actually argue that they would be sort of outside of a human rights obligation to live up to it. Now, I don't expect that ICANN will ever go checking websites, but I do expect that ICANN will be open to complaints that basically this, um, you know, uh, community TLD was granted on a certain basis, and on that certain basis, it guaranteed that it would do this, this, and that, and it is not doing this, this, and that. At that point, you're in a contractual obligation space and not in a human rights space. Now, I think there's lots of things to talk about with regard to ICANN, human rights, and what I've always seen as sort of an aversion in ICANN to discussing human rights. I think until recently the word was actually a scary word to most people in, in ICANN, perhaps because of its implications. But I, I think in terms of this particular issue, once there's a contract drawn, once somebody agrees that our, our GTLD is only going to be used for people that love a particular kind of car, and then you start using that TLD for people who think bicycles are better than cars, and a car aficionado comes and says, this is not legitimate, this is an illegitimate use, it, it, it's, it's in a contractual issue basis, and it's not actually a human rights issue. Thanks, 
I don't know if that's what you're looking sure, for. Sure, but your microphone's on. I wasn't sure if you you had you stopped talking. Um, well, it's a good it's a good point um, to to raise, and perhaps that's a useful point also to to go to um, to Frank uh, to Franklin, um, who is the uh, uh, on the ICANN's Governmental Advisory Committee, um, and for those who aren't aware, um, the Government Advisory Committee has a particular role within ICANN, um, and uh, it's probably uniquely placed, I think, in terms of its own human rights obligations um, as, a, as a stakeholder group within, within ICANN. So, um, Franklin, if you would like to, to comment, please. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, first, I... I Beg apologies because my voice is not very good, and I'm, I've been speaking in many mm. events. We are reaching the end of the week, and a pharyngitis got me. But uh, I would like to commend the uh, organizers of this uh, workshop and to thank for the invitation because uh, I understand that they have chosen a very timely uh, theme for the workshop, uh, and I think it's timely mainly because of two reasons. In, on, in a broader perspective. Uh, considering all those uh, uh, discussions that uh, sometimes uh, are, uh, are brought to me as a member of the GAC and as a member of uh, the Brazilian government, if the right to the access to the Internet is a human right or not. And in a mo more specific uh, fashion, uh, considering that the, the theme of the workshop relates to human rights and ICANN, uh, I think this is a timely workshop because ICANN has a, a, a new CEO uh, that has already uh, uh, spoken here to the, to the main audience. And uh, Mr. Fadi has uh, uh, proposed a very uh, uh, ambitious agenda in which he says that he wants to approach ICANN from the stakeholders, approach ICANN from the countries, approach and mainly approach ICANN to the people. And I think this has everything to do with human rights, as uh, I will uh, say uh, later on. Uh, then with a view to, to sort of frame what would be the, the, the human rights that could be uh, uh, like it was asked in the beginning of the workshop, I mean, let's map the human rights that have to do with the ICANN public role. And then I, I, I decided to, to first make uh, directory of some human rights and then to see if it in some uh, foundational, I would say, or some executional documents of ICANN, if we could see an intertwining uh, area. And then I chose three, three human rights from the, the first and some of the second, some of the three, third generation, uh, following that classical division of human rights, especially the uh, rights of freedom of speech, of expression, uh, the right of freedom to assembly, of assembly, and the right to development, which is a third generation human right. And uh, among the many documents that would be available to see if ICANN has anything to do with these rights, I chose the affirmation of commitment. And I did not go very far, because uh, when you read the, the, the affirmation of commitment, uh, it says very clearly that ICANN should in all events uh, act in the benefit of public. And then later on, uh, we see that uh, when uh, implementing its actions, ICANN should empower people. Doesn't it have to do with the rights of development? Uh, ICANN should spur innovation and facilitate trade and commerce. Doesn't it have to do also with the rights of, to development? Uh, should enable the free flow of information which has everything to do with the rights of freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and even to freedom of assembly, because the free flow of information sometimes is what spurs and what allows the assembly of people. Uh, then what I mean, uh, uh, the, the point I want to, to make is this. I mean, ICANN is not, uh, it's not on its mandate to pursue a human rights agenda. ICANN has a very uh, clear mandate which it fulfills uh, very, very, uh, very well. But uh, what I want to say is that when fulfilling this, this mandate, uh, there are some, uh, some areas of this implementation that really have to do with the implementation of some human rights. How it should be implemented, it's a theme that I, uh, I leave for the debate, and I would like to, to participate in this debate as well. 
But uh, these are the contributions that I bring on this mapping of the human rights that uh, have to do with the public policy role of ICANN. Thank you very much. Thank you, Franklin. And I, I can see some um, some continuity some, some amongst the speakers in terms of uh, the, r the range of rights, whether it's um, freedom of expression, privacy, um, perhaps also the right to development you've highlighted. And, um, and I think it was very pleasing to see in the GAC um, statement of principles on new GTLDs that the GAC did affirm the application of the Universal Dec Declaration of Human Rights. Um, uh, and uh, as its base document in relation to principles for human rights in carrying out its role. Um, and I think that one of the unique uh, opportunities the IGF affords is an, ab an ability to look at those obligations across the multiple forums in which governments have, have um, ha operate, not only ICANN, but also uh, in their roles uh, within, within nations and within the Human Rights Council and so on. Um, before, um, before sort of um, going back to us, because I just wanted to offer the chance for the audience to perhaps ask a question in relation to the range of human rights that they've they've uh, heard panelists raise, and wondering uh, if someone has a microphone, they could take it to our, the gentleman at the front. Um, if there are other human rights uh, issues in particular that might be uh, relevant that haven't been raised. So can the remote raise, is there a microphone? Yeah. Thank you. We'll just test to see if that works. Yes, yeah, so and just please identify yourself by the audience. Is it for? Yep. Okay. Uh, listening to the, to the conversation uh, of the, the panelists, it seems the most immediate threat that uh, I can, uh, any, any I can decision making can, can pose to the uh, freedom of expression online is this whole aspect of who is in privacy and, and, and the private registration. Uh, I just want to know what is, what is happening with that discussion, where is it now and where is it heading? And, 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 what, what's, what's, and, and, and what would be the role for the civil society that can play in, 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 the, in that conversation now? Uh, given as an activist working in an authoritarian country, that if that happens, that then none of none of us we can we can we can operate even one single website because the government can easily find out the entire information that is is just about you, and they can target that individual. So I think that's that's the, for me is the most important aspect the element that I can will have a have, have a play in in the freedom of expression. Just want to know what 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 is the state of that that decision? Thank you, Wendy. Sure, and I mean, I'll, I'll start by noting that there are lots of information security measures that uh, I, I hope you're, you're taking advantage of as, as activists, um, and the domain name is only one tiny piece of that, but it's important to, to give uh, security in the domain name registration as well. Um, and so, you know, you might uh, register it through a person acting as proxy who doesn't face those same kind of threats, as well as looking for uh, ways to, to register without having to, to give information. But so very, then down to the very specific question of what's happening in the ICANN uh, policy space right now, uh, the, the registrar accreditation agreement is being uh, renegotiated. That's the agreement that registrars uh, sign with ICANN governing their uh, domain registration policies. Um, and in there, uh, law enforcement has made several demands, uh, many of which uh, ICANN is negotiating um, with the registrars, including uh, data verification and validation uh, and data retention, um, all of which would contribute to collecting and, and storing more information uh, about domain registrants and requiring that that be uh, accurate information. Um, so uh, if, if there are, uh, and that, that would apply to all registrars um, who sign on the new, the new agreement in the GTLD uh, domains. Um, so as Kuo Wei said, there are other, play, other registries uh, not subject to the ICANN rules. But if that very specific case uh, is, applies and is a concern, um, I would be interested, uh, the non-commercial stakeholders would be interested in, uh, in talking to you more to develop uh, 
that as input to the ICANN policy process. What is happening with the proxy registration, private registration? Yeah. Is, is, is that also, is that, 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 that would be safe? Yes, yeah, so, so the, the proxy registration um, done by some of the domain name registrars is you give them your information and they put their information into the database, uh, which keeps it private until somebody with enough power to compel them to turn it over uh, makes a request. Thank you. Go on. Uh, let me add to the Wendy saying. Uh, actually, yeah, um, that actually is uh, under uh, you know re negotiation about between the ICANN and the registrar. But uh, let me say a little bit more about a registrar because uh, there are many kind of the registrar. The registrar we are talking about in here is uh, those of registrar have agreement with ICANN. But there are much more registrar. It's not under the, you know, agreement with ICANN. What's that? Those are registrar have an agreement with the CCTLD. Sorry, they are not under the agreement with the ICANN. In that part, we cannot do anything because it is under their own sovereignty national regulations. So I think uh, what we, we should understand that we, when we're talking about registrar is that those one, those registrar have agreement with ICANN and that is under just like Wendy say. So let me clarify a little bit about this. Thanks. Yes, from the floor. Oh, Avery, sorry, I didn't see. Yeah, thanks. I'd like to add a little bit to it. So when you're using the, the ICANN accredited registrars, the worst case is actually already the case. You are theoretically supposed to give clear information. Now, we have been able to use proxies of various sorts, but there's constant pull against those proxies to either make them be accredited and therefore have to give away information as easily as anyone else. And um, they are subject to, to, to various national pulls. So th the worst case already exists, and that's in fact one of the reasons why so many people don't give accurate information. That's one of the reasons why law enforcement is trying to demand accurate information. And I think what Kuwait says is right about the CCTLDs, but then you must take a caution to not register with a CCTLD that is in a country that is as repressive as ICANN or other countries might be in terms of revealing information. You pick an Iceland. You pick a country that both is willing to register names for anyone. They don't need to be in that country. And who has a strong, for example, Europe has the strongest uh, gen generally privacy protections. And some countries within Europe have even stronger privacy protections than required by the European rules. So y you use proxies, but, but for double safety, you also use proxies in a country that doesn't require people to reveal, if, if to say as safe as possible. I'll go to, just please identify yourself for those who. Thanks, Joy. It's Steve DelBianco with NetChoice. And, and the panel actually has been an effective commercial for why everybody who's interested in these issues should get involved at ICANN through the non-commercial stakeholders group at NCSG. Uh, all of these people bring their point of view to ICANN, and, and it adds to the richness and balance of a multi-stakeholder environment, where I also participate and don't always agree but I definitely benefit all the time from, from your point of view. And on this one, on this particular issue of human rights, uh, Avri is correct. It is a scary word. It was to me at ICANN because I had visions of all 30 of these UN Declaration of Human Rights being pulled into the ICANN purview and expand the scope of ICANN. Because here at the IGF, we are quick to inform people that ICANN has a very limited mission very limited scope of just managing the registration of labels or domain names and then helping to get the resolution of those domain names when people want to find them. And that's it. That's ICANN's job is the integrity and availability of registrations and resolutions. I worry all the time that our scope 
would encompass other human rights, like the right to s health, food, to work, and to, it doesn't belong there. But uh, finally, to get to the who is question, when do you right, you identified number 19, the right to free expression. But there's also number three, the right to live safely. Number 17, the right to own things and not the right for others to take them away from you without cause. So a lot of us who don't agree with you on the who is believe that, that there are rights that call for who is to be accurate and accessible, to stop fraud and abuse online. And when you balance those rights, that's a rich conversation we have at ICANN. You won't necessarily resolve it here. But I would just ask you to acknowledge there's more than just number 19. There are others. And uh, the importance of that balance comes out, as you told this gentleman, that there are alternative ways to protect his identity by picking a CCTLD or a privacy proxy service that's in a regime that respects privacy. But thanks for all you do here and at ICANN. Thank, thanks, Steve. I think, cool, cool. Yeah, I'd just uh, like to, you know, add one more thing. You, if you like to talking about particularly the who is database and, and, and something like uh, the human rights, more than just registrar, if you look at the whole ecosystems, more than the registrar, Beyond the registrar, there is a reseller. And reseller is no agreement with ICANN. Reseller is under agreement with their registrar. So that part is, can we go further? You know, I think that is a, there is a, a several of the different issues. And that is a, how, you know, the ICANN multi-stakeholder mechanism is bring all the issue together. And, and I think we can find, hopefully we can find a, balance point and to resolve the issues. Thanks, Kuwait. I mean, I think we, we're, we're um, sort of at an interesting juncture in looking at this, this sort of once you've got a range of rights on the table, uh, this, you've got this question about how do you balance them with each other? And I think a, a, a key question that's come forward in ICANN repeatedly on different um, issues is how fairly are those rights weighed and balanced to each other? Uh, for example, the rights, um, you know, trademark related rights uh, as opposed to free expression rights, rights to freedom of association as opposed to um, uh, law enforcement's um, uh, desire to, to uh, fulfil its duties. Um, and I think as um, uh, Hong mentioned earlier, there's a very interesting tension arising around this in relation to the point at which technical issues um, become substantive issues. Uh, and at what point um, uh, this technical question of name and coordination suddenly becomes, looks as if it's going to reach through that name into the actual content um, of, of a, a website. And I just wanted you to perhaps explore that a little bit more, um, Hong, in light of um, this question about how, how I might balance uh, competing rights. Just, just some comments that might then, yeah, thanks. Thank you, Joy. Uh, well, I guess uh, just now every use is a, a very brilliant example to show it's very clear. Um, if it's um, um, labeled as a community base uh, for a car lover and is discovered that somebody like bicycle registered <laughs> that, I don't believe, it, I truthfully don't believe I can will proactively check every website registered as a car lover. Uh, the, the domain, but they will receive complaints. They could receive the, the, the complaints from that community. And in that case, the ICANN should subject this TLD manager to compliance. That will be an issue. And I guess Joy um, very correctly mentioned the trademark issues. Uh, I, I guess we, we, the colleagues here has been a long history with this, uh, a TPM and, and this uh, and, and uh, and this, the, the TPM is getting stronger and stronger. What is interesting is that uh, probably Wendy can, can uh, brief us that the new proposal of uh, enhancing the TPM, uh, 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 expanding uh, URS, uh, the longer sunrise. <laughs> All right, having to do anything on PDDRP is my favorite part. But the PDDRP, I mentioned many, many times, they cannot just decide whether this is abusive TLD or not, whether this is uh, facilitating cyber scouting. They have to check the contents. So it seems that this is really a mission creep. But I want to, the gentleman uh, has a very valid point. ICANN is limited mission. What I'm talking about, if you have a limited mission, you have a limited mission, <laughs> please don't go so far. Uh, if you are expanding this right protection mechanism um, and uh, 
taking care of that community support initiative, uh, I guess it's inevitably to go into the contents, and that will may not be in the mission of ICANN. Thanks, um, Wendy. Um, the trade part, trademark protection mechanism issue, I guess, has been raised. I mean, if you'd like to perhaps comment on, for those who aren't familiar um, uh, with that, uh, just sort of briefly, um, perhaps the um, points that Hong has raised. Um, you know, there, there are current discussions going on um, about the, the trademark protections to be uh, required of. Uh, new registries as they launch for uh, new GTLDs, and uh, the, the 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 live question on the table uh, is whether that will be uh, an implementation of the compromise that was struck between uh, a multi uh, among uh, a multi-stakeholder group of uh, trademark interests and registries and registrars and non-commercials uh, all. Uh, working together to agree that there are some places where trademarks need to be protected against uh, infringement and some places uh, where the uh, right some others to register generic terms that somebody else happens to have registered as a trademark uh, need to be respected uh, and balanced uh, and the right to, to register at reasonable cost uh, so as not to require um, a, a lengthy or costly verification procedure uh, in advance. Uh, there are ongoing discussions, and um, it's been the, the expressed uh, hope of the, the non-commercial stakeholder group that uh, these compromises not be reopened um, and that uh, we work to implement the, the measures that were uh, approved in this, uh, in this mode rather than uh, change them or, or change the, the dispute resolution uh, procedure uh, for the, the URS is the uniform rapid suspension. Uh, another thing that, that sounds uh, innocuous, uh, providing a uniform way to take down uh, a domain name rapidly when it's uh, found to be infringing, uh, the, the challenges at the edge cases where uh, somebody might use that uh, if it were too easy uh, to take down a domain name uh, that was engaged in protest or political speech uh, or in commercial criticism um, that at a quick glance could be mistaken for infringement but uh, is in fact uh, entitled to protection as free expression. So uh, all of these are uh, again places where uh, we're engaged in, in ongoing comment and discussion. Thanks, thanks, Wendy. Before going back to the audience of questions, um, Franklin, I, I guess this question of how to balance um, rights is one that comes up in the GAC a lot. Um, and of course, there are you know very diverse perspectives on this amongst GAC members. And just wondering if you could reflect on on, on that in um, the context of, of what you see as some of the human rights discussions going on within the GAC. Yeah, thank you. Of course, uh, within the GAC, <coughs> we, since we gather only representatives of governments, uh, this discussions are very much focused and informed by uh, uh, the way and the, the means that the governments have to, to uh, implement and to react to the policies, uh, to the public policies that are uh, made by, by ICANN. Uh, and, uh, there has been a lot of discussion on the GTLDs and also in the WHOIS uh, database here. And uh, I think the key, he the key issue here, that was uh, one of the points I raised on my initial remarks, is the mandate. In this case, I think it's a mandate that uh, uh, ICANN has to uh, act in the benefit of public. In the case of the GTLDs, for example, this, uh, this has a paradoxical, I would say, uh, result, uh, because uh, some GTLDs are being are applications from uh, uh, private companies, and that have been uh, discussed in, within GAC uh, as applications that somehow harm the interests of communities. Mm -hmm. uh, some of these uh, early warnings have already been presented to the GAC. Some are still going to be presented. And uh, in this case, the, 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 the optics and, and, and the, f the, the perspective that we in the GAC understand that uh, ICANN should is, 
is to respond to the public interest. So in this case, when you have an application that would hinder the capacity of this community in the future, have a space uh, or, a, domi or um, a domain where they could uh, use in the benefit of the, of, the, of the community. And the first benefit of the community, because the name of the, the, the title of the domain refers specifically to them, so it would be very clearly uh, related to their interests. Uh, in, in this case, uh, uh, GAC will support the, uh, the, the complaint from uh, this or that country. But in the same, in the same fashion, we uh, know that some uh, GTLDs applications, quite in the opposite way, they uh, reflect the interest of communities. And this is why in the GAC, the most recent meeting in Toronto, uh, there was uh, a view which uh, was expressed by many countries that uh, the new GTLDs that uh, reflect the interest of community, like Dot London, Dot Rio, and there are some other, um, there are some other GTLDs in Spain, for example, for some communities, uh, ICANN would be acting in the public interest, and in this sense coming back to the associations that we have already made here today, would be acting uh, with respect to human rights if these uh, GTLDs had, um, uh, were prioritized. Uh, regarding the Ruiz, uh, from the, my perspective as a government agent, uh, I think the, the, the issue is not so much what is in the database, but what can be do with it, can, can be done with it. And uh, in this sense, of the, the perspective that I have to offer is the Brazilian perspective. Uh, we are now voting in, in, in Congress a uh, civil landmark or civil framework of the Internet, which aims uh, precisely on when you have this need of balance between security and privacy to st uh, start by the, uh, addressing the issues of privacy, which is also has everything to do with the human rights of, uh, of privacy. And, uh, uh, well, these are two issues that are being discussed in the GEC, and this is the governmental perspective that I would like to offer. Thanks. I mean, I think it's interesting to reflect, um, as um, uh, Kuwait said earlier, that, I mean, ICANN kind of was only being created um, in the last um, 14 years or so, so it, it sort of inherited a set of um, systems uh, that were already operating and that it was trying to sort of coordinate and uh, one would expect that over time uh, it's, uh, uh, the discussion about rights would mature, develop, shift uh, with the ebbs and ebb and flow, um, uh, not only within stakeholder groups but also within the GAC and sort of you know, as, a, as a whole. I mean, one of the, the other um, uh, ideas for, for this workshop was to also think about what are some ways to, um, to take forward the relevant human rights uh, assessments within ICANN um, policies uh, that, are, that touch on uh, these topics. Um, but also, I think, uh, in light of the questions from the audience um, earlier, you know, what are the ways for those who are outside ICANN to perhaps be more informed about how these, these technical issues might be directly impacting on, on their um, uh, on their work and how might they respond and I, I just wondered, um, wanted to give the panellists a chance to respond to that question. I might start with, um, I'm going, I can see that you want to talk well, I'm happy to start with you and then perhaps go to Avery. Um, please, go ahead. Um, uh, first of all, let me, let me say two things. The first thing is, uh, is just uh, to clarify. I graduated from the computer science department. So from my point of view, actually, ICANN is not technical at all. <laughs> I, can, I can have no code. I can have no machine to run. You know, we, all we did was just go to the process. <laughs> so it's, it, it's, it's kind of uh, easy for me to say that ICANN is a technical institution. You know, sorry, uh, um, maybe I'm wrong, but sorry. My background is a computer science, you know. <laughs> so this is uh, kind of uh, very strange to me. First, uh, the second, though, I think um, uh, back to the question that the chair asking. Uh, 
again, I say ICANN is not a perfect mechanism, but I think ICANN is an innovative mechanism, at least uh, in the 1998. If I remember that the Harvard Batman Center <laughs> put this in, you know, and somehow that is uh, try to balance the different voices uh, from different stakeholders and come out with a possible balanced way to resolve the issues. And at least in the last 14 years, I start this uh, ICANN process, also the internet governance issue, from 1994 till now. To be honest, I see the improvements. For example, if I remember, I was a APNIC EC for 12 years. I also is a board member of the TWNIC <laughs> for many years. I, I see in the early days, actually, those are stakeholders how to work in, in the ICANN mechanism is a lot of fighting. For example, how much they need to pay, what kind of country they need to sign with ICANN, and what is the gag, how to form it. To be honest, I would say this is a huge improvement. You know, not perfect, but it's good improvement. And at the same time, you can see like uh, IGF, the UN IGF. If you ever participate the wishes in the Geneva and the Tunis, <laughs> as I did, if I remember, you know, we are private sector, we are civic society, we even don't have a floor to say anything, you know. We, we only can listen. And if you want to say something, you need to pass to some government delegate and ask them to say it for you. You know, I, I think the ICANN and the IGF, this mechanism, this platform, is, is at least is a good platform and good mechanism. If you think this is a one of the good mechanisms to resolve a problem for any kind of internet issue, I will encourage you to your local community, to your society, to your country, to promote it and make it better to all of us and for the public interest, not only the public order. You know, I'm much interested in the public interest. You know, I, I think the public order, well, I don't know what's that, you know. So I would say, let's try to promote this mechanism as much as we can. Thanks. Avery? Okay. Uh, I actually like the notion that there's really very little that's technical about ICANN. It's really an administrative and a policy building body f contract no. uh, for many of those technical issues. So it, it's a bookkeeping in, in, in many cases. Um, but, but in terms of, I guess the question you, was asking, you were asking me was how do people get involved with it, is, is that, and, and I mean, there's, there's, there's a myriad of ways, although I'm not sure how this leads us more onto the human rights except for how you discuss them. And it's everything from, you know, bringing your organization into one of the groupings, one of the stakeholder groups, one of the at-large structures, your government joining if you don't happen, to, joining the GAC if you don't happen to already be there, to the much lighter things that everything that, that ICANN does has a comment period. There are more comment periods than the people that pay close attention can possibly pay close attention to. And, and so one of the places where actually the, the community at large can, can help is actually paying a little bit of attention to the subjects that matter to them within the the comments. So to, to watch for, for the who is and, and, and to watch for those various human rights related issues. One of the new things that, that's just starting up, and this has been something that I've been campaigning for for years, was to have rights assessments on every policy that gets made. Now, for years I was actually trying to get human rights assessments made on every policy that got made regarding the, the GTLDs. And this only extends to GTLD policy. It doesn't extend to the country code CCTLD policies. It doesn't extend to 
uh, addressing policies insofar as I can and not the RIRs slash NRO are actually the ones making them. But in terms of the, the, the GTLDs, we have just changed our policy development process to require a a rights impact analysis and other things, competition impact analysis, what have you. But since the topic here is about rights, we are now required on every policy to do a rights impact analysis. So that is an opportunity for anyone in, in the global community that, that ICANN serves to basically read these proposed, and, and every policy, again, this is the GTLD, the CC, you know, world does it slightly differently, but at least twice at the point at which there's an initial thought about what our policy is going to be, and then at the point at which we think we've finalized, there is a community outreach, and that includes rights impact. So reading it at an initial point allows you to basically sort of say, you didn't deal with this issue. Then what we're supposed to do is go back into our little working groups, and so at which, of course, any of you are always able to join, but that re requires a little bit more commitment than just reading a document and commenting. Phone calls in the middle of night and all kinds of wonderful things. Um, but basically, when you comment, we are bound by the, the policy development process rules to read, try to understand, and act upon in some way. Now, we can act upon it by saying, thank you very much, we read this, but we don't think this is relevant because, and, and we have to write that down, and, and it sometimes, or we could say, yes, we've changed it because, or we could say, yes, but this standing against that needs to be dealt with in some other way. So it's not that we, uh, those of us, and, and the we is, you join the working group, you're part of that we. It, it's sort of an instant transformation from being the community that's reviewing to the, to the community that's, that's responding. Um, we are responsible for responding to all of them, to think about all of them. And, and so, and in fact, even in the initial process when the, the ICANN staff is first presenting the issue and, and uh, trying to lay out what that issue contains, there's an open review that includes a, the, the, the staff's first view of what might be rights issues that need to come up in this. So there's at least three opportunities in every policy for anyone and everyone that wants to grab it off the internet. It's always open and available. I'm not sure how good we are about things like RSS notifications of something within a particular interest area, but the community is always looking for ways to do better. Uh, huh? Uh, you'll have to grab um, because I'm not really sure, but. Oh, okay. Uh, so I guess I didn't even know. But um, basically, so there's any number of ways to get involved, to be told what's, what's being worked on, to voice your opinions, and to then check at the end of the day before the board approves anything. And this goes, I think, for all of the policies, not just the... The, the individual policy development for, for GTLDs is the board does one last, anybody in the community have any comments on this? And then they take those into account and when they render their last decisions, they are supposed to, and for the most part do, uh, respond to how they took those comments and why they did what they did with those comments. So. There is a lot of opportunity. Some people argue too much opportunity, too much to read, too much to comment on. It all comes all at once, etc. But from my point of view, it's always better to have too much commenting opportunity than too little commenting opportunity. Thanks, um, Avrind. Um, I mean, 
a couple of other just uh, by way of information, a couple of other ways that um, the non-commercial user constituency has also been trying to sort of foster um, human rights discussion and sort of cons in consideration has been to look at developing its own policy principles in some kind of open way to to, to um, articulate the, these as the guiding principles, whatever the public policy issues might be, that these are the kinds of um, principles we're taking into account. And so recently, for example, um, the, uh, the non-commercial user constituency um, issued a, 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 a wrote to the ICANN board with a comment on the new GTLDs and human rights uh, and in particular the kinds of uh, issues that might arise and how these might be balanced in the mix. So I think in addition to the PDPs, there are also a variety of ways to to make um, points known. But um, I'm also conscious that there are a number of other input mechanisms. So for example, I know the um, Council of Europe, for example, has developed some, some guidance for Council of Europe members on human rights and new GTLDs. I don't know, Ivana, if you'd like to briefly just perhaps mention those, uh, if you can get the microphone. Who has the microphone? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you hear me? Yeah. Uh, my name is Elvana Thaci and I work for the Council of Europe. Just uh, two words of introduction about the organization. The Council of Europe is an intergovernmental organization which brings together 47 European member states. Um, we work with these governments to promote, uh, to protect and pr promote uh, human rights, democracy and rule of law. We are an observer to the GAC and um, we work with the members of the GAC to, um, to, to, to discuss human rights issues. Um, in that context, I would like to mention two elements. First, a declaration by the Committee of Ministers of 47 member states on domain names and freedom of expression and freedom of association. And that declaration explicitly mentions that international standards on freedom of expression and freedom of association do apply to domain names. Um, and states should be attentive to the protection of, hu of uh, the right to freedom of expression and the right to freedom of association with regard to domain names. Um, secondly, um, w recently we have submitted um, a paper, um, an inform information paper to the GAC membership um, in, I in which we analyze um, the um, aspects related to freedom of expres expression and freedom of association with regard to new GTLDs and the implications um, uh, that may be uh, useful to be um, taken into account by the GAC members in their um, evaluation of, of new GTLDs. Um, so our, our role in the GAC is really to foster a discussion on, on human rights protection in respect to, to this program, the new GTLDs program. Thank you. Thanks, Elvana. Um, I think it's possibly uh, worth noting and perhaps picking up the point that Franklin made earlier that um, governments who are represented in the GAC are, GAC are also doing a variety of work in country and it's really important to to acknowledge that this is another source of direct um, input and influence, um, to, in other words to, to find GAC representatives, to engage with them um, within the mandate that of work that they have and to, and to connect essentially those um, those rights. And it, it, I'm not sure, frankly, if you have any reflection on that, but it seems the IGF is, a, is, a, is another space in which some of those connections can get made outside of ICANN. Um, would you like to comment on that, perhaps? No, uh, certainly IGF is a fantastic, <laughs> a fantastic uh, catalyst of this. This is my first IGF, and uh, the amount of networking and of opportunities that I have had to interact and to has been... But the point I would like to make is the... Um, I don't know how much time we still have, but... A few minutes. Probably a few minutes, yeah, for the sake of final comments. Um, uh, I think uh, the, uh, to, to, to implement this... Uh, uh, it was the first question that was made to them. How would we make uh, ICANN uh, implement its public uh, policy uh, role with a view to human rights. Um, what I think uh, is that this is something that uh, we should not 
put only on the shoulders of ICANN and of the, for example, like was mentioned here, the, the non-commercial users that should be empowered and should be... Uh, in fact, this, uh, the, the, the fulfillment of human rights is, is a concept and it's an approach to all the actions. I mean, uh, we have individual responsibilities regarding human rights. If I hire somebody to work in my place, I have uh, responsibilities with the respect of human rights of that person. Uh, companies have responsibilities. Governments have responsibilities. Uh, and then uh, I think that uh, uh, the, the public policy role of ICANN of, uh, to be uh, implemented with respect to human rights, it's also dependent that all the stakeholders fulfill their, their individual responsibilities. This can be, uh, this is a naive position, but if this is naive, the whole concept of human rights is, na is, is naive. Because <laughs> it is, uh, 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 wh what is it if not an approach that all, uh, an individual and in the company and the state and the government and in the uh, global level would have to, to fulfill. Thanks, Franklin. I'm going to take one last question from the floor and then I think an opportunity for any closing remarks. If the microphone, please, can be given to the woman here, please. The microphone. The technicians, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm, my name is Beatriz Busaniche. I'm from Argentina, from a civil society, an NGO called Via Libre Foundation. And I want to tell you a story about my country right now, which concerns us a lot. Uh, the CCTLD has changed in the last uh, years from the Ministry of International Relationships to the presidency directly. And since that, the new team uh, that is uh, controlling the CCTLD has been refusing some, uh, uh, some domain names because of political issues. For example, if you try to register anything related to Cristina, which is the name of our president, it will be automatically denied. And we, have, we, we did a, an official um, uh, information uh, request and we, had the, uh, we have the answer. I have the official answer here in my computer if you want to check that. Uh, there is a huge list of names denied containing s things like, for example, El Alberto Presidente. El Alberto is one of the presidential candidates. And for example, there is another uh, domain name denied, which is Macri 2015, which is in 2015 we have presidential elections and Macri is the opposition candidate. So they are right now, and I have it in an official answer to our uh, information request, so they signed this answer, Den they are denying these kind of domain names which have nothing wrong. For example, if you want to uh, uh, register uh, something with Christina, even uh, th there is a famous case uh, uh, that was um, shown by the press there, said uh, uh, the domain name was La Casa de Christina, something like uh, Christina's home. And it was uh, from a lady who had a, a dress uh, business and her business was Christina's home, or La Casa de Christina. So she had to prove that her website will have nothing to do with Christina, our president, to get the domain. So that is a shame. And, and my question is, how could we enforce this human rights perspective when this is uh, now a no, not really official policy? They are recognizing this. But they, it, there is no written policy saying which are the domains they will deny. And if you check the list, it's, it's like a random list containing things like, for example, Energia y Equidad, which is a magazine from an NGO. I know they are friends of mine. And it was denied. We don't know why. And everything related to Cristina and to other politicians is uh, being denied automatically. So this is a huge uh, freedom of expression issue. Now uh, we have to deal with this in Argentina. We really uh, want. Uh, I, w I would really would like to hear your opinion on this case and maybe some suggestions or something we could do. Thank you. Thanks. It's an excellent question. I see Avri wanting to reply um, immediately. Avri. 
in one thing, there's absolutely nothing that I can can do to help you because it is a CCTLD and it is sovereign. So other than changing your government, um, there's literally can do. There is, however, if the possibility. Have their homepage. Right. There is, however, the possibility of getting a name in some other CCTLD <laughs> yes. or some other GTLD. But really, that's the problem. That's the good thing about CCTLDs, and that's the bad thing about CCTLDs. If if it's in a if it's in a Wonder World regime that 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 is is totally open and and totally oriented to human rights and privacy, it's a good place to be. If it's in a regime that's not quite so friendly, it's a bad place to be. Go away. I think what he, what she say is kind of commercial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, um, that that just uh, yeah. Try to try to figure out is. Uh, I I I I have to say as uh, I can bore. We really thanks all the stakeholders including the GAC. You can imagine how many documents sent to us. You know? <laughs> and Wendy was, uh, was uh, I can bore before he, he knew that. We need to go through every, you know, the stakeholder document and find out the balance. So really thanks for all the stakeholder and particularly the GAC. You know, in the recent read, the GAC really good response to every issue, you know, that have a dialogue with us. I, I, I really thank for all of that. In the name of all the GAC members, I appreciate your remarks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course, okay. including, including the Brazil. <laughs> Wendy, did you have any comments on this one? Or? I, I think it's been well articulated. The, the only other comment I would make is I think your example really highlights why a strong um, you know, public policy rights compliant approach to those other parts of GTLD um, public po policy for example is so important because if you do, if your options for going elsewhere are restricted um, then I think uh, you know, that multiplies the effect. Um, one of the, well, it's interesting that you raise this because a theme that's been coming through from other workshops is very much that the human rights environment offline is affecting the, hum the ability to 